Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels. We are going to that horrible world known as the JRC, but before we do the disclaimers, apologies for my hair's appearance. I promise it will look better later. I set an appointment with the hair person. I'm going to try to make this as short and sweet as humanly possible and forego the usual ranting. We're just going to jump into it, okay? All right, so through the disclaimers, right? In the description box, you're going to find a link to the article that the Judge Rotenberg Education doesn't want you to read. It's written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by autistics for autistics wherein they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's so-called behavior modification program. Matter of fact, the JRC doesn't want you to read this article so much. They've threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit if they did not remove it from the website. Well, folks, Neuroclastic has refused, so you know the drill. Please read that article and share it on all your social media. Also included in there is Neuroclastic's public statement regards to the defamation lawsuit threat as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding in case the JRC actually sees through with their threat. Also included in there, the Ozarks' first article in regards to Agape Boarding School, also known as Stone for Help Boarding School. A so-called Christian-themed boarding school based out of Stockton, Missouri that takes in so-called trouble male teens that has not pending over 21 civil lawsuits, claims, and allegations leveled against it, all which have been substantiated by the Missouri Department of Social Services, and they include the following. Sodomy, rape, sexual assault, child abuse, psychological and emotional abuse, child trafficking, starvation, and that's just for starters. You have one former staff member arrested by the FBI, another a doctor still on the premises with full access to the boys up on multiple, again, substantiated claims of sodomy, rape, and sexual assault. The boys there. You have an attorney general too busy being obsessed with chasing down and badly photoshopping drag queens, as well as trying and failing to defund public libraries to actually do his job. And you got a governor off this nut. So sit help. Read that article, share it on all your social media. We got the other pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign as well, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject, Jennifer Masamba's behavioral sheet of shockable offenses, a clip out of the seven hour ordeal undergone by Andre McCollins back in 2002, the templates, and the ever present self explanatory change.org shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. When we discuss the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, folks, please go ahead and use those headphones, all right? This channel is marked not for kids for a reason. We use profanity on occasion and speak on dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger and they are watching this, very obviously, parental supervision is very much advised. All right, going to the next paragraph, hoping to keep it short and sweet. 11 a.m. The following year, the Massachusetts Department of Developmental Services passed an amendment to its regulations on behavioral modification in its state licensed facilities, which includes residential schools for children with developmental disabilities. This amendment bans what the regulation term as level three adversives, which include but are not limited to contingent electric shock, physical punishment, and non-emergency restraint and seclusion. In the context of the DDS regulated facilities, including residential special education schools. However, this is how the JRC gets away with it, folks. They grandfather in the use of such interventions on children who had court-approved treatment plans that included them as of the 1st of September 2011. They found even more loopholes since then, kids. Okay? They call it grandfathered in. But we all know for a fact that the actuality is... That law from 1986 is held over the Massachusetts courts like the sword of Damocles. They have found a loophole where if they can get it court mandated, 
since 2020? Yeah. So the protections that exist for all the other licensed schools to have to go through that department no longer have access to level three adversives. The JRC remains the special one. And no one has done jack squat since then. Yeah. Lastly, in March of 2012, Wisconsin passed its first law on the use of restraint and seclusion in public schools. The statute limits their use significantly, stating that they are only permissible when a student poses a clear, present, and immediate risk to him or himself and others, and when there is no less restrictive alternative available, specifically prohibits the punitive use of restraint. Well, all of this is well and good, if you actually read these laws instead of trusting these people, because take it from me, who's been dealing with politicians and guidelines and this crap since 2006, there are enough holes when it comes to these guidelines to drive a Mack truck through. Okay? The restrictions that they talk about do not get applied whatsoever to any school within the realm of the troubled teen industry. I want you to hear me again. All these protections in multitudes of states are not applied whatsoever, zilch, nada, nothing, to the schools that fall in the frame of the troubled teen industry. They remain massively unregulated. The students who go there have zero protections. Zilch. They don't even have the ones that we do, which are just a bunch of performance nonsense. Okay? So those with mental health issues who inevitably get sent to these places instead of being properly treated Get no protection. None. Absolutely none. Places like the JRC have it people who are unfortunately smart enough to see those holes and exploit the hell out of them. Okay? If you think they haven't signed anyone up for the GED since 2012, I got beachfront property with a nice ocean view in Kansas, I can sell you. Okay? fact of the matter is, they've become more aggressive in lobbying to remove the very few protections that have to be enforced at the school so that they can put more of us on the device. And unfortunately, their small chiseling and chiseling and chiseling has been successful. There is also zero protections in regards to food deprivation sleep deprivation, and the bizarre behavioral rehearsal lessons they get up to. Let's go ahead and finish it out here. It bans mechanical and chemical restraints and unmonitored seclusion and limits physical restraints that would endanger students' health and safety. Finally, it imposes both staff training and parental notification requirements for the use of adversives. Again, I will say it again. You, as a school, public or otherwise, should absolutely do no form of adversives other than the minimal that is used in regular public schooling, such as detention, without parental consent. We live in a world now that likes to throw away parental rights like they mean nothing. Okay? Okay. Now, I'm not talking about some of these more fundamentalist Christians who, I don't know what to tell you about them, but they're kind of part of the book-burning crowd, okay? We're not talking about that. But we are talking about is places like this who will use that. Basically, they use and abuse their power to place themselves in the parental role and removing the actual parents 
from the picture entirely. What is wrong with that? Well, if you look at the interviews with the four moms, it becomes very, very apparent what is wrong with that. You're essentially removing parents from the equation when it comes to their child's medical and mental health treatment. Okay? Things that are very much solely a parent's responsibility. A school is allowed to refer, even guide to a certain extent. They're also allowed to collaborate with doctors, social workers, what have you, like what happened in my instance, in order to create an overall program that will work to the benefit of the student. What they're not allowed to do, this is what I mean when I say parents, know your rights, is remove you from the occasion entirely. Literally going on with all we have to do is notify you. No. No. Exercise your parental rights. That is your child. Other than the ordinary forms of discipline that can be found in any regular public high school. Anything that goes beyond that is at the parent's discretion, not the school's. If there are some forms that are needed due to very disturbing behaviors, I understand that. Remember, I've told you about my stepbrother. Believe me, if anyone on this planet understands that, schools, it would be me. Okay? However, parents should not be informed afterwards like an afterthought. You come to the parents first. It is their kid, not the state's. Okay? This is why parents need to be more involved. Yes, even with their own neurotypical kids schooling. Because you got a lot of schools these days trying to undo the bans on corporal punishment. I know. I live in Missouri. Please kill me. You can't just trust the schools anymore. Matter of fact, you shouldn't have in the first place because all this stuff got started in the 90s where you had a generation of parents that kind of stood aside while they allowed slowly why schools started becoming the parents. And by the way, if you think teachers are a part of this push, they're not. I have many friends who are teachers, folks. They are not happy whatsoever with now being forced, both by the state and by some parents, not through parents' fault, but through lack of education, that they are now assuming the role of the parent for these kids. That's not what they signed up for when they went to college, folks. They didn't sign up to become parents of hundreds of kids. All right? Parents, know your rights. Get involved. I can't state it enough. Schools, know your place. Those are not your kids, no matter what the state and the government try to tell you. Parents, have rights. Your students have rights. Those rights should be respected. You should not be trying to dig and find loopholes around them because if you want an effective treatment program that is going to help lead that student to an as independent life as possible, that can only happen when teachers, parents, and everyone is involved and are collaborating with one another and communicating with one another. Okay? Anything short of that. Well, 
kids get taken from school to school to school and they get thrown into places like this, don't they? We're gonna close out on that. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So please don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time. As always, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. I will see you after the haircut, folks. Bye-bye.